Tip Tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today, we're taking a look at liquid transition effects. I had a few people on the Discord channel ask about this, and also a few people just in the comments and things as well. There's plenty of videos about this online, but they usually are specific to a project. For example, there's the famous cell phone or, or mobile phone transition one, um, and it focuses a lot on how it works in that particular instance and i just want to show you how to get this nice rippling effect and you can apply it then to anything that you want to do um so let's dive right in first thing you're going to want to do is create a new composition i have a frame rate of 60 i've had people ask about this that's just because i record my screen in 60 fps as well um now and it for sort of messes with the composition sometimes looks weird if the frame rate is different uh i recommend doing it in 25 or 30 frames per second because it does help with rendering and also people some people say 60 frames per second looks a bit weird i think it's fine um doesn't really matter in my opinion so we're going to create a solid for our background then and just hit okay uh, and then we're just going to grab our circle tool and we're just going to draw a nice circle in the center of the stage quickly realign its anchor point and push it to the middle Okay, um, so we need some sort of animation to apply the ripple effect to. So I'm just going to do a quick trim path on this. Start an endpoint there. Make it maybe two seconds in length. And adjust those points. And then shift it. And give it a bit of an ease so that it looks a bit nicer. Say 50. Perfect. Okay, let's crop that to there. Um, actually, just crop it exactly to that last keyframe. Oops, my mistake. There we go. And now you can see we've got a very simple um, line animation. Uh, one thing I will actually do is just change that uh, stroke cap to round just to make it look a bit nicer. Okay, lovely jubbly. So um, let's trim that too so the dot doesn't actually fully disappear. Lovely, there we are. Okay, so we now have our, our animation and we're going to want to... Um, uh, apply our effect to it to make it look liquid. Um, now this is done via a combination of turbulent displace, uh, roughened edges and a simple choker. So we're going to want to apply this on an adjustment layer and what that means is any shapes that we create underneath it, the um, effects that we create will apply to all of them. So new adjustment layer and we'll call this one, uh, not ripples, we'll call it liquid. Now, if we just pop over to our effects panel and we type in turbulent, we want to apply our turbulent displace to our adjustment layer. And you can see immediately that it started to mess with the line that we've created um, to the point where it creates a displacement map, which is basically if you think like you're laying an invisible piece of fabric over your um, composition and then you're just creating ripples and ridges in it and then the shapes underneath it apply to those ripples and ridges. That's basically the way it works. Uh, don't quote me on that, but that's my understanding of it at least. Now, 50 is a bit much. Maybe we'll try and drop down to 35, see how that looks. That basically decreases the amount of ripples or the intensity of them. Maybe even 20. No, 20 is too low. Let's stick at 35. And we'll just reduce the size down to 50. Um, and what that does is it's the overall size of your displacement map. Um, now, it will obviously apply still to the size of the um, it's not the same size as the adjustment layer, for example. It's the size in sort of depth and intensity of the displacement map. Um, so that's all we need to do with the turbulent displace. Uh, we then just need to quickly add a roughen edges. Um, and what this does uh, is, well, it roughens the edges. Okay, so you can actually see that it's applied the roughen edges to the um, shape layer, uh, the um, solid that we have as a background. So what we're going to do now is grab our shape layer and our liquid and quickly pre-compose that. We'll just call it inner. Uh, and now you can see that it's actually applied the rough and edges to our shape instead. So if we pop inside that pre-comp uh, and we hide the rough and edges, you can see that it basically just takes all that smooth edge and just bubbles it up a bit so it looks a little bit more like liquid, um, which is really useful. I'm going to leave those settings as they are, but um, here's a quick tip. If you want your liquid to look like it's leaving bits behind, you can actually increase the border and you can see that it really does become a bit more um, see through in places and a bit more as if it's leaving, you know, a trail. Uh, and what you could do then is obviously um, duplicate this, for example, both layers, put them on top of each other, and then take your shape layer on top and reduce that border. 
um, and then have uh, adjust your um, uh, starting and end points so that the top layer is shorter. Uh, say for example, like so, and you'll see that underneath it, it's got that sort of splodge left behind. So you get more of a really liquidy effect that disappears. Uh, we won't do that for now though. We'll just keep it nice and simple. So we have this and we're gonna put our border around eight, um, which is good, nice and rough and a nice circular um, liquid type motion. Now, at the moment, this uh, sort of stays still as it moves and you can tell that it is still just kind of a line path. What we want is this kind of to ripple a bit as it moves around the page. Also, if we, this comes into contact with other pieces of liquid, we kind of want them to splodge together in the same way that we had in our Jelly UI tutorial, which you can find on the channel if you haven't seen that yet. Um, and that is achieved via the simple choker. And what this does when you punk it on your adjustment layer, if you increase the choke mat, you'll see that your um, line actually does get a bit smaller because you're choking out the edges. Um, but if it comes into contact with another um, shape, for example, then the two um, will sort of be attracted to each other and, and as if two pieces of liquid um, are joining, which is a nice effect when you're going for this kind of liquid transition. Uh, now that is all that we need actually for our uh, liquid transition effect. The last thing is obviously to create that movement as it's moving. Uh, and the way you do that is via the evolution of the turbulence displays. So if we go to our evolution here and we just keyframe, and then we go to our evolution at the end and we say two full rotations between the two. Now you'll notice that um, the end shape is now different to the start shape, which is not what we want. So if we hit U to bring up our keyframes and go to the last one, we'll actually have our resolution to be zero, which means that the start and end shapes will be exactly the same. So if we pop into the middle of these um, and go to say roughly the center, maybe about there, and we have the full rotation, you'll see that the shape does change now as it moves, but it should start and end on exactly the same shape. So if we quickly give that a pre-render, um, you'll notice that now as the line moves around, uh, it, the sides of the shape don't hold. You see they're stretching and they're warping slightly. Now, if you want that to be more intense, you can increase the complexity. And you can see now that, wow, this is really moving and rippling about. So maybe we'll put that at 1.5, halfway between the two. Um, and we'll just wait for this to finish rendering. And you'll see that as it moves around, it should start and finish in the same shape, which it does. Um, and then it should just... Uh, Oh, we'll have to re-render that, sorry, because I changed the complexity. Um, it should morph and twist in that shape as it moves um, and start and end in exactly the same position, uh, which is very useful when you want to create looping animations. So let's give it a look now. Okay, here we go. There is a lovely liquid transition effect. Uh, now, obviously, if you wanted this to have a background, that's fine. You could just go back to your original comp and view it there. You've still got the background underneath it uh, and you can see that it wobbles and moves around. Now, one thing to um, just help illustrate a point, to show you that this will actually be different no matter what shapes you make, so it's not actually using the same um, algorithm to determine the shape of it. If I duplicate that layer, I scale it down and I change the color to say, I don't know, a nice disgusting green. Um, and then I make two more copies and push them to the left and to the right to equal measurements. And we can change those colors as well, just to give us a bit of uh, a difference between our shapes. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Uh, and now we look at this, for example, you can see that the start points for uh, to start <laughs> are all different already. Uh, and as they move, around in the circle, uh, all the shapes are different. Um, so it really is, it's generated live. Now, those shapes aren't gonna change each time you generate it, but on every position, every pixel starting point of that circle will affect the shape of um, the remainder that comes after it. So for example, if I were to move this purple one, it would actually have a completely different shape, as you can see, than it does to all the others. Um, so that can be really useful. So let's just pop back here and we'll quickly pre-render it with the background so it's not just on an ugly back. And there we go. That's really all there is to it. It's a really, really useful technique. Now, obviously, if you wanted to apply this to a shape, that's fine. You just 
don't do a circle you just do a line path or you do a fill instead of a stroke it's really up to you but that is basically what you need to create the liquid transition effect in any situation that you want so i really hope you found this useful guys um if you have anything else that you want to talk about um, regarding to this or anything else you can pop over to our discord channel uh, the link to that is below and it's basically a community where you guys can chat and hang out and um, talk to each other and me um if you don't want to do that then you can also leave a comment below um but i find that the discord channel is a lot more healthy of a community than the youtube comments so i check that more regularly um but yes in the meantime have fun creating things and i'll see you all next time Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.